Welcome back to Harbaugh. While it's clear Trump's selection of Steve Bannon as his chief White House strategist has enraged people, Bannon's also a polarizing figure among Republicans. As The Hill reported last month, Bannon often told his colleagues at the conservative website Breitbart that, quote, Paul Ryan is the enemy, writing in a 2015 memo that the long game is to have him, that would be Ryan, gone by spring. As a source said, he thinks Paul Ryan is part of a conspiracy with George Soros and Paul Singer, in which elitists want to bring one world to government. Even conservative commentator Glenn Beck today prescribed, described the prospect of Bannon in the White House as terrifying. Let's watch him. He's a nightmare. And he's the chief advisor to the president of the United States now. Bannon has a clear tie to white nationalists. Clear tie. He is a guy who has, uh, he wants to tear this system down and replace it with a new system. He is, he is a frightening, no, no, no. He is a terrifying man. <laughs> terrifying man. I'm joined right now by the roundtable, Benji Sarlin to my left here is an NBC News political reporter. Molly Ball covers politics for The Atlantic and Jason Johnson's politics editor for The Root. Jason, you can start. No, Benji, you start because you've been working on this all day and I, or all week or whatever. Uh, tell me why a person should be afraid of Steve Bannon in the White House, in the West Wing. Well, this is the concern. There hasn't been someone like Steve Bannon in a Republican administration. He's been this very kind of burn it all down, uh, inflammatory site that's had pretty aggressive efforts to play up the alt-right and try to bring in this audience that really gets into issues of white nationalism that you discussed earlier. And that's a scary prospect for a lot of Republicans who really have instinctively recoiled from this. And during the campaign, they try to paint this distinction where, well, we love the Mike Pence part of the Trump campaign, and we love it when he, you know, he sounds like a normal Republican, when we could talk to those guys. And we'll just kind of ignore that Breitbart wing that's talking about strange Muslim conspiracies and talking about banning Muslims. You're not going to be able to do that when it's one of the most powerful people in the White House who has the president's ear every day. That's the point where it's going to start affecting policy, affecting mm -hmm. how you appeal to people. Uh, it's, so it's putting them in this bind now where, once again, people are trying to put their head in the sand. I was on the Hill today. Republicans are just start, starting to stream in for the lame duck session, but you're hearing nary a peep about Steve Bannon so yeah. far. Uh, so far, people don't really want to talk about him. Well, how do, you, how do you read his, nation, have his nationalism? What do you think yeah, Breitbart's about? What, is he, what does Bannon bring to the head every day with Trump? Right. He's sitting right there. He goes into the White House. He sits in the Oval Office of the President of the United States who's trying to figure out what to do right now, and here he's listening to this guy. Let's be clear about this. The New York Times did a story about this last year. There have been more people killed in America by white nationalist extremist groups since 9-11 than jihadis. Okay, that means that a website that supports those sorts of beliefs, supports white nationalism, supports the, right, the far right, you basically have a chief advisor who is a terrorist sympathizer. That is what these people are. Now, you can call it alt-right. People want to call alt-right. Those are basically the guys who don't want to get their knuckles bloody, but they encourage Dylan Roof to go out and do what he did. And Stephen Bannon is in favor of that kind of belief. He has given a home for those sorts of people on his website. Who are we talking him, about here? Uh, Bannon. Bannon. Now, it, you who, know, who do you encourage to do what? Well, well the, the, the Breitbart website provides a place for those people to speak, for them to work on their ideas, and for them to disseminate that beliefs. And less smart people go out and commit violent acts. And therefore, he is a danger okay. to domestic security. Uh, Molly, I want you to get in here because Alex Jones, the right-wing radio host of InfoWars, who also believes the 9-11 truth or conspiracy, said this morning that Trump called him to thank him and his listeners. NBC News has not independently verified that conversation, but here's how Jones described it. On my way here, Donald Trump gave me a call. And I told him, Mr. President-elect, you're too busy. We don't need to talk. But we still spent over five minutes. He said, listen, Alex, I just talked to the kings and queens of the world, world leaders, you name it. But he said, it doesn't matter. I wanted to talk to you to thank your audience, and I'll be on the next few weeks to thank them. I said, is this a private call? He said, no. I want to thank your viewers, thank your listeners for standing up for this republic. We know what you did early on throughout this campaign. Stand up for what's right. It shows. As you can figure, just listen to that guy. Jones is best known for peddling conspiracy theories about the left and last month called Obama and Hillary Clinton demons. Literal demons. She is an abject, psychopathic demon from hell. I was told people around her that they think she's demon-possessed. I'm told her and Obama just stink, 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 stink. You can't wash that evil off, man. Obama and Hillary both smell like sulfur. 
Okay, demons. He means it. It's not a joke. It's not a metaphor. <laughs> he means literal demons. It's not a metaphor. Look, I mean, we have a preview of what it sounds like when Donald Trump has Stephen Bannon and Alex Jones in his ear because it's been the case for this entire campaign. It was Stephen Bannon who was writing the rhetoric that came out of his mouth every day on the campaign trail when he was talking about a globalist cabal of bankers and, 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 and elites that Hillary Clinton was trying to, you know, rig the system and steal the presidency. As Benji was saying, I think a lot of Republicans hoped that Trump would get into office and forget about all that, then that he would just sign the Ryan budget and, and do whatever Republicans in Congress wanted. And this is proof that these, these guys are coming with him to the White House. People like Steve Bannon are actually his belief system. Yeah. And, and Stephen Bannon doesn't believe in yeah, the old see, left versus right see, paradigm. The happy people it's a totally believe, new war for him. The happy people now are saying he's transactional. You know, He only cut those deals with the crazies to get here. But it looks like he's not transactional. It looks like he's uh, communal. Or at least anyway, it feels like he owes the crazy The round table something. staying with us. And up next, these three will tell me more of things I don't know. Anyway, this is Hardball, the place for politics.